friends, welcome to Ivy's Fortress. I'm Ashanti, your reading friend, and we have a classic today, The Three Bears and Goldilocks by Margaret Willie and Heather M. Solomon. This is one of the first stories my daughter loved to hear from me, so I'm so glad that I'm able to get on here and read it to you. I'm excited. It's a classic for many, many reasons, and there's a lot you can learn and discover on this adventure of the three bears and Goldilocks. The back cover reads, someone has come in and must my queenly bed too. Hmm. All right, well, let's get reading. So putting our reading glasses on, much better. And now we'll get started. We all know that Goldilocks has a lot to say about the three bears. Everything they have is either too hot or too cold or too big or too lumpy or too hard or too soft or too completely absolutely wrong. Only one of them can get anything right. Just right, that is. But have you ever wondered, even for the littlest mini second, what the three bears think about her? Well, it turns out those bears have a thing or two or three to say. Margaret Wiley turns this favorite classic upside down because there's always another side to the story. Mmm, I'm excited for this one. Let's see what it's about. Wonder what the three bears are gonna think. The Three Bears and Goldilocks by Margaret Willie, illustrated by Heather M. Solomon. This is a Athenaeum Books for Young Readers book. In the farthest reaches of the far north lived a girl named Goldilocks, who was bolder than most and very curious. One morning, her father wrapped a bright scarf around her neck and said, It is all very well to love adventure, child, but you must be careful not to rush headlong into places where you don't belong. And Goldilocks listened, but did not really listen. She set off by herself into the forest to see what amusements she might find. She went along and she went along down a twisting path through tall pines and firs and junipers until she came to a sunny clearing with no trees, only a small cabin with a heavy door. Goldilocks was too curious to walk past. She thought, I will go up to the door and knock three times and see whoever is inside might invite me to play. She knocked once twice, three times. No one answered, but the door opened slightly, just enough for Goldilocks to see into the room beyond. It was a room unlike any room she had ever seen. The floor was strewn from corner to corner with leaves and berry stems and pine cones and fish bones and thick brown fur. No one could play in this messy place, Goldilocks thought. She took a raggedy broom from behind the door and began to sweep, thinking that her mother would be very proud of her for being so helpful. She swept for a long time until the floors were clear and the pile of sweepings outside the cabin door was waist high. All of that work made her very hungry. So she looked about the cabin for something to eat. Near the hearth were three bowls of still warm porridge, but it was unlike any porridge that Goldilocks had ever seen. It was mixed with beetles, bark, lumps of grass, and fish scales. What awful porridge this forest folk eat, Goldilocks thought. But she was so hungry that she picked through all of the lumps in the smallest bowl, sweetened what was left in the honey from a honey jar, and ate every last bite. All of that porridge made Goldilocks very tired, and she looked about herself for a comfortable place to rest. In a room at the back of the cabin, there were three beds, but they were unlike any beds that Goldilocks had ever seen. They were really piles of straws and leaves and pine needles and bird feathers, each pile covered with a fuzzy blanket. 
What sort of family would sleep this way? Goldilocks wondered. She climbed onto the largest pile and found that it was made of mostly pine needles and was very hard and prickly. Then she climbed onto the middle pile, made mostly of duck feathers, and found it much too puffy and soft. The third pile was the smallest, with a wood woolly blanket her own size, and this bed she found quite comfortable. She settled down with a sigh. I will only shut my eyes for a wee moment, she thought, but before her next breath, she was sound asleep. Meanwhile, three brown bears came lumbering back from a walk they had taken while their porridge cooled. When they saw the pile of sweepings outside the door of their cabin, Papa Bear let out a roar. Who has come and made a mess of our fine house? He cried. He saw that the front door was slightly open. Shh, he said to the others. We must go inside and look for clues. The three bears all came inside fearfully, with Papa Bear leading the way, sniffing the air and rolling his bearish head. When they came to the hearth, the three bears saw at once what had happened to their breakfast. Mama Bear cried, Who has come inside and ruined my perfect porridge? Baby Bear came up behind her and peered into his empty bowl. Someone first ruined my porridge and then used all my honey and then ate every last bite. And he began to snuffle and cry. Shh, Papa Bear said. We must look for other clues. He lumbered through the cabin, burying his teeth, Mama and Baby Bear close behind him. When he came upon his bed, he saw that his blanket was rumpled. Someone has come in and moved my kingly bed, he cried. Mama Bear saw that her pile had sunk down and her blanket was also moosed. Someone has come in and moved my queenly bed too, she exclaimed. Baby Bear crouched over his own bed and he spoke in a voice that was more surprised than angry. Someone has come in and most my bed, he asked. And look, Mama, here she very much still is. The three bears came closer to look in amazement at the sleeping Goldilocks. Poor creature, said Papa Bear. She has no soft fur but that odd patch on her head. Poor creature, said Mama Bear. She has no lovely claws for catching fish in the river. Poor creature, said Baby Bear. Her teeth are so small and silly. They all three stared down at Goldilocks. At that very moment, Goldilocks woke from her nap and opened her eyes. Only inches away were the furry snouts and sharp teeth of the bears. She was too afraid to even to blink. Behind the bear, she spied a window open just enough for a little person to squeeze through. She jumped from the bed, dashed to the window, and wiggled through in a flash. Then she ran and ran and ran all the way back to her own house, where her father was setting the table. He asked, Did you remember my advice, my advice today, child? Goldilocks was still out of breath from running, and she gasped, Yes, Papa, I must never, ever, ever go headlong into a cabin in the woods full of bears. That is not exactly what I said, said her father, but it is worth remembering. So funny, children will tell you, you know, what's going on when you're not around them. And sometimes the things they say are extremely unbelievable or are out of alignment with what we had told them to say. So I think it's interesting that Goldilocks explained perfectly what her experience of disregarding her father's advice and then moving on to finding out why his advice was important. So let's read a little bit about our author and illustrator. Margaret Willey is the Charlotte Zalatow award-winning author of Cleaver Beatrice, as well as Cleaver Beatrice and the Best Little Pony and A Clever Beatrice Christmas. Like Goldilocks, Margaret prefers her porridge without fish scales. She lives in Grand Haven, Michigan. 
Heather M. Solomon has illustrated all of the clever Beecher's books, as well as If I Were a Lion and The Secret Keeper. Her house is just about as full of clutter as the bears, and she would certainly be upset if somebody barged in and rearranged things, unless that somebody wanted to wash all her dirty dishes. Heather lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I checked this book out from my local library, and I would encourage you to check it out as well. It's a great bedtime read and a good reminder of why we should listen to our parents. Well, that's all I have for you friends today. I will catch you next time in our next read aloud. Bye. We truly enjoy sharing our adventures with you here at Ivy's Fortress. If you do too, like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, what are you doing? It is your choice, but we'll race you there. Bye.